For over 40 years, the Sundance Film Festival has been held on the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Shoshone, Paiute, Gojute, and Ute tribal nations. We do land acknowledgments to recognize the traditional stewards of this land and our 500 years of resistance to ongoing colonialism. But can we acknowledge the land without listening to the land? Take a moment to really listen. From the Ute to the Wet'suwet'en, from the Anishinaabe to the Kingdom of Hawaii, indigenous nations all over the world understand that the land does not belong to us. We belong to the land. And we continue to fight for her. Let this land acknowledgement move you beyond symbolic recognition. Let it be your call to action. Support indigenous resistance. Join us in the fight to protect our mother, for our human and non-human kin, for the next seven generations. Welcome to the Sundance Film Festival. My name is Dilcia Barrera and I am a programmer for the festival and it's my honor to introduce today's Cinema Cafe presented by Audible. This Cinema Cafe is one of my favorite yearly traditions. It's called Fresh Faces because we're highlighting the performances of new exciting voices. Our special guests today include John Early, star of My Trip to Spain, Lily McCurney, star of Palm Trees and Power Lines, and Donald Elise Watkins, star of Emergency. Please make sure to catch their projects during the festival. And of course, we would like to thank our wonderful moderator, Joey Soloway, for moderating today's conversation. Joey is the Sundance Film Festival next year this year, and we're so thankful to have them join us today. Please do not forget, we have many other conversations taking place here throughout the festival and beyond. I encourage you to check out the schedule on our website in the Sundance official talks and events program. Thanks again, and we hope you enjoy the show. And now we hand it over to Joey. Thank you so much. Super grateful to be at Sundance. All of us coming in from the cold, is everybody shaking off the snow? Um, this is a real honor to be talking to these young people, um, especially since I'm not sure how many of you know, um, this year's Fresh Faces is sponsored by uh, Neutrogena. We're looking for the actors with the freshest skin and the most interesting skincare routine. So we're going to spend the next hour. No, that's not true. Um, <laughs> uh, but speaking of skincare routines, let's start with John Early. Why don't you pop on up and let's... Uh, Let's start with him. Uh, what? How do you keep your skin so fresh, John? Well, this is not a joke. I 
I'm, um, you know, Theta has come in town, Theta, the director of my trip to Spain, and Ali, our producer, they've come into LA so we can have our own little sun dance and it's involved a lot of drinking. And um, I, so I woke up this morning feeling truly puffy and hungover and I did for the first time in my life a, very, a Joan Crawford <laughs> one. I did a literal ice bath, you know, and it's clocking so at 34 on the Fresh Faces panel, I feel Okay, so these are going to be great uh, tips for keeping, yeah, keeping your skin fr fresh uh, and ice it bath. It worked. You look amazing. And you made great. it to the Fresh Faces panel. Okay, let's talk to uh, Donald Elise Watkins. Come on to the uh, fresh, face, <laughs> fresh Faces stage. What's your morning skincare routine? How do you, how oh do you get to be so emollient that you would be chosen for the Fresh Faces panel? Uh, honestly, I feel like it's genetics. But you got to hydrate. It's, it's not about the morning. It's about the night before. So you have to hydrate. That's what it is. And then moisturize. Hydrate and moisturize and you cannot go wrong. Great. Okay. So a little Lily McInerney. 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 <laughs> Lily McInerney. Is that right? Yes, exactly. I'm putting um, my hand on the inside of my knee so that I can just say Lily McInerney. McInerney. Perfect. Yes. Um, <laughs> what's your skincare routine? <laughs> Glad to finally be recognized for uh, the fresh face that I put so much work into. Um, sunscreen. Sunscreen, baby. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> yeah, so if any of you people want to make it to the fresh face panel, you know some things to do about keeping you know the inner glow and the dewy glow, which is what's most important when you're making art. Um, and I want to welcome all three of you. And everybody who's in the audience and everybody who came in from the cold on Main Street, I can just imagine them all sitting there. It's super exciting to be in this room with you. And hosting this kind of thing, I kind of want to divide the next hour into two categories. And one is thinking about the people who are watching, who are probably young creators. And I want to ask you to all just kind of think about an aha moment you had as an actor or as like in your career or in your practice, aha moments where you just fucking got it, you know, what it means to allow a character in or what it means to just like be in this career with dignity in such an awful time in the world. And so at any point I might just yell aha and point to one of you and, uh, or virt virtually point, but. Um, Joey, can I interrupt? Oh, yes. What's your skincare routine? <laughs> yeah, thank you, John. Thanks for asking. Um, I'm representing <laughs> the decrepit, nifty over 50 crowd. Um, but you, as you can tell, I probably was also chosen for my skin. Yes. <laughs> Still fresh in their 50s. Thanks, Neutrogena. <laughs> chapstick. I slather a chapstick all over my face and Vaseline before bed and then wake up an hour later real sweaty. Um, but the real question I want to ask especially considering all of your performances is a, I really want to talk, have a real talk about the director actor relationship, what it means to sometimes be a, a doppelganger for the director's story for their younger self, sometimes for their past. And also about just collaboration and corroborate, corroborating one another, especially when we're, we're, you know, trans and queer. Um, so I, you know, I, I think I'm just going to start with you, John or John early. What's your, what, what comes up for an aha moment for you in, in your career? Well, I would say the most kind of like singular moment for me was probably watching Polyester, the John Waters movie when I was like 24. Mm -hmm. I had never, I had really kind of avoided John Waters uh, for no reason other than I just, he seemed so cool, you know, and his little, the you know, the Dreamlanders or whatever, his, his little ensemble, they always seemed so like kind of oppressively cool to me. And so I kind of stayed away. I felt intimidated. And then I watched polyester and I was like weeping. <laughs> I had never seen anything like it. And I, I really, um, it, I, it was a moment where I was like, oh, you can take th this kind of, you know, angry, gay, co very comedic worldview and you can put it in a kind of cinematic context. You can, you can, um, you can make it like luscious and beautiful and like it put it in a kind of like Douglas Cirque frame of reference. Um, Cause I, 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 I had a kind of like comedy side of myself and then I had a, a kind of more serious, like kind of auteur, like 
ambitions. Um, and so, so seeing, seeing that movie really merged those two sides of myself. Awesome. Thanks. Aha moments brought to you by Neutrogena. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be more aha moments later. But um, actually, you guys, obviously, this is my destiny to be hosting this sort of thing every day. This is all I want to do. Um, Donald, I want to talk to you about your relationship with Carrie Ooh. and that thing that happens on set. But, you know, before, during, you know, before and then when action is called and the relationship between your performance and their directorial <laughs> dreaming talk about that that love story man I'm, I'm glad that you said love story because that really is how like what it felt like um carrie is probably and i know he's watching now so he's gonna be like oh no for real like he's probably one of the coolest people that i've ever met in my life and I don't think I've ever told him that. And if I did, he probably would just kind of brush it off and think I'm just playing around. But no, he is really one of the greatest guys. Um, we both see things like very rhythmically. Um, so when I when I finally got it, when I finally got it, um, uh, Carrie was the first one to call and say, hey, it was uh, RJ and myself. And he's like, you know, I really just kind of want to talk about these characters and how you guys see it. And I'm like, oh, I got a playlist. I have this thing. And he's like, oh, wait, you have a playlist? I make playlists too. And I feel like my playlist was like way too long. Um, <laughs> it was like hours long. He was probably thinking it's going to be like 10 songs. And I got like 60 of them. Um, but from then on, he just makes you feel so comfortable. Um, and I really fit in that, you know, I think some of us, we know like that's not always the case on set that everybody from cast and crew feels like we are allowed to, you know, express ourselves in any way. Um, and he just really just kind of cultivates like that with you just kind of being, is this, this is a safe space. Um, and yeah, I just, I really, really dug that guy. And his direction is like, also he's like one of the coolest people that you'll meet because Carrie will do this thing where he wants you to figure it out. And then he has no qualms about, hey, if I kind of saw it this way, he'll say, oh, well, what did you think about it? I'm like, ah, I kind of saw this. And he's like, yeah, yeah, let's go with that. And he'll completely change it up no matter what his preconceived notion was. He's like, no, 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 I like that. Let's do that. And that like collaborative spirit, I think is what makes him as great as he is. And why he's going to continue to go on and just kind of rise up. And mm. I hope I get a chance to work with him again. I love that dude. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for that. It's, of course, I want to know like one song on the playlist that, yeah, <laughs> just I one. Playlist if you want it. It's long. Drop it in the, in the chat. Right. Yeah, drop like it in drop the chat. It in the chat. So, yeah. Or the whole playlist would be amazing. Right. Um, but so, yeah, Lily, I want to talk to you about um, your relationship with Jamie and wow, you're in some ways like playing her really. And also just, I want to hear about your relationship. For me, this like moment in feminist film history where we're saying this is what consent looks like or this is not what consent looks like. And it's all in your facial expressions and your body. It's like, how do you and how did you guys approach this this? It's really a threesome, the two of you and the character. Yeah, um, it was really important. Uh, I think just the initial conversations we had that weren't even addressing the script necessarily, but just exchanging personal stories and experiences that we as women, and unfortunately all too many women experience universally, um, whether, you know, it's it's a semi-autobiographical film, you know, pieces are borrowed from Jamie's life and other pieces are borrowed from other women's stories. Um, and, and my approach was very similar, uh, but, uh, that being said, uh, it was it was those that 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 level of familiarity and openness um, that we shared before even like trying to tackle any of the text or any of the rehearsals. Do you, like, do you guys tussle over like who who Leah belongs to? Um, no, not necessarily. I I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there is kind of. 
a moment on set and I'm kind of going back to your aha moment. Okay, great. That's perfect. If you don't mind because it was just such an inspiring question and it brought to mind this one specific moment on set that was the first day I got to work with Gretchen Mall. And that was actually the first day we were tackling any dialogue whatsoever because the way that the shoot was arranged, thankfully, um, Jamie uh, scheduled it so that the first few days of shooting were all um, just vignettes, very little dialogue and kind of private moments with myself to really help get acclimated to just being in front of the camera's lens because this was my very first film at all. Um, one of the first days of dialogue that I was having in front of the camera with such an incredible scene partner as Gretchen Mall, um, I kind of had this like aha moment where I realized all the different like generations of women's stories converging, whether it was Jamie's experiences, my experiences, and then Gretchen's own personal experiences, all kind of combining in this fictional like like explosion, which felt just kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, but it felt like something much greater than either Jamie or myself. And um, to get to share that with such an incredible performer as Gretchen was kind of like, wow, like this is just spectacular. Um, yeah, I, I love, I love, thank you so much. It's like such yeah. a floating feeling, I think, when, yeah. when the camera is rolling and suddenly everybody's lifted into air and in this thing, which is the scene, you know, and you come back from it, you know, and I, I remember that as a director, my first film, Catherine Hahn and Juno Temple, my very first scene. And I was like, oh, everything changes after I say action. I get mm -hmm. to watch these two evolve. And then when I say cut, now I have to feel how to, move on to the next, you know, it's just all fe this feeling thing. And so I want to use that idea to talk a little bit about, like I mentioned to the Sundance people, how exciting I am, excited I am that this is the Fresh Faces panel and not the women's panel, the queer panel, the black panel, the trans panel. This is the Fresh Faces panel. For anybody who's listening, we are not sponsored by Neutrogena at all. That was <laughs> no sponsor, <laughs> nonprofit. But um. I feel like everybody's kind of talking about, let's call it like a queer or like an unqueering or an undoing of the gaze of the white gaze or the male gaze by not having that part. All of you sound like you don't have that person on the set who's like, here I come to give you notes. I wrote it like this, say it like this. Here I go, I gave you notes, you know? <laughs> is, is, it, is it about like this kind of radical, um, attempt to undo some of the traditions of screen, of, of, of filmmaking? Anyone can answer. <laughs> I, I feel like it's more of a, a vibe with the individual, you know? Um, when you have someone who is willing and open to collaborate where it doesn't matter where the idea comes from. I mean, that's really what we're in service to. We're in service to these characters and to the story. So, mm -hmm. No, so if a if a good idea comes from here, if a good idea comes from there, then absolutely let's go with that. Um, I I feel like when people want to hold on to something, it's like it, the same way like with acting. I can't come in a scene with Lily and say, okay, this is how I rehearsed it at home. So hey, Lily, I need you to do it like this because this is how I saw you reacting to me, and this is how I need to you know perform. Everything changes and. My ideas are always going to be the best ideas. <laughs> so I, I think when you have someone like that who, who steps in and they, you know, they are the figurehead they, and everything trickles down from there. Um, I'm just very glad that we didn't have some sort of like tyrant <laughs> um, because I don't think you get a chance to make the art that we did. Yeah. How do you guys feel like, do you, like John, can you talk about a, a, potent, a potentially like trans or queering of the process or Lily kind of like feminist version of process? Um, I definitely think in the case of Theta and me, we, we don't think about that at all. Like, um, I think it just naturally is in the kind of um, subject matter. It's, it, it's what really like, I, I'm deeply proud of about the short um, is like, it doesn't, um, lead with any sort of kind of 
uh, maybe political intention. Um, it, it's and I think that's really rare. I think there's a lot of pressure when you um, are, you know, making something with a trans person, especially like for it to like kind of reflect these kind of like um, <laughs> um, what have become so largely like kind of corporate check checklists of like we have, we have a trans creator, we have a you know we have a trans star, and it's and it's about trans liberation, you know, <laughs> um, and like and and I think it was really thrilling to actually for Theta to just make a short about FFS, facial feminization surgery, and like, and and to make it about that in the time of COVID and how that kind of psychologically breaks down among these like three characters. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I, you know, it's interesting. There's a scene in the short where we have this kind of fight um, where I, um, and trying to basically talk her talking, I'm talking her out of getting the surgery. And there are a lot of people who have kind of responded to that scene or, or have kind of interpreted that scene as this like indictment of the, like, uh, of the kind of the cis person's like ignorance in kind of talking to a trans person about FFS, you know, and Theta and I were so shocked by that because <laughs> It actually, we we see it as a very like really intimate, very loving scene about like two people who have been friends for a very long time, and they they actually are are so close that they feel a kind of safety to have a conversation about FFS that is completely removed from like the online discourse about FFS. <laughs> You know, there's like a, and I, I think that's what is so exciting to me about that scene. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't cave to the pressure to adhere to these like, um, kind of like mores, like like mostly online mores about those kinds of discussions. And I think it's really, I think it's a really, really beautiful scene in its like kind of unintentional like rejection of that, you know, um, yeah. That moment really stood out to me. I thought your performance was just spectacular. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. I, I was re-watching it today and I was like, God, I'm about to the Fresh Faces panel and I'm so, there's just such a mask of redness. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? There's the, there's a gift bag in the green room afterwards where we are gonna give you some oh, products. Goodness. And as you can see, I'm <laughs> using them as well. And if you want you know, to I it. love the way you keep making it real. Like <laughs> the green room and Main Street, it's so it's so generous of you. Yeah, and also if anybody wants to go out for any just like miso soup later tonight, I'll be out on the main on Main Street. Um just Absolutely. having sushi. Okay. So um Lily, I want to just talk to you a little bit about I think this thing that about a lot of our people watching must be thinking, like, holy shit, this was your first movie. You went from not really thinking of yourself even as somebody who would be leading a film and yet you're so natural it's you're so amazing and yeah i think a little bit about licorice pizza as well and and this moment where suddenly people are like we want to we just want people we don't want all these actors how do you move from you know lily to leah like what became your toolbox to um embody the character well that's a very um generous comparison thank you uh uh, I borrowed from a lot of personal experiences, I would say, when first preparing for this role. Um, I'm not too much older than the character, but um, I still feel like I've, you know, matured leaps and bounds just compared to my 17 year old self. So mm -hmm. I went through all of my old diaries. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, which is, ooh. I think I actually threw most of them out after the fact. <laughs> 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 done <laughs> put it on screen and just <laughs> push it away but um yeah it was I actually I actually got the news that I'd booked the role in the height of lockdown so I was at my family home and um was able to go through all of these kind of um artifacts from my adolescence that proved to be so useful in just getting into the mindset of the character uh I also used music as a really important trigger kind of bouncing off of what Donald was talking about. Um, I went to therapy and that was really helpful because uh, not only did I know I was going to be tackling a lot of really intense subject matter with the film, but 
just the responsibility of having my first acting role, let alone my first leading role, and um, the kind of fear of totally dropping the ball at any given moment, <laughs> uh, I, I, it, it was proved to be kind of um, life-changing and just to have that like emotional preparation for stepping onto a set like this. Um, yeah. Yeah, I also, I, I went to a performing arts high school. So I was like a theater kid before this, but um, I kind of changed tracks and interests as I grew older. Um, I'm so blessed to have gotten this opportunity and ended up kind of returning to what I first fell in love with as a, as a, as a teenager. But um, I worked with my high school acting teacher and, and mentor Harry Schiffman um, when I first found out I was I was doing this so he was an incredible inspiration to me as well awesome aha uh -huh. you know what that sound means it's time for another aha uh -huh moment we're gonna turn to you Donald ah. uh, just give us one in your career in your process when it came together you figured it out man well I'm just it changes. See, it changes. I thought I had one and then Lily said something. So I'm just going to jump off of that. Um, I'm definitely a theater kid. That's where I came up and uh, making that transition from theater to film is not necessarily easy. Like it's all acting, but it's like it's like if you're lifting weights, it's like doing upper and doing lower. So I'm trying to, you know, get on set and I'm trying to project and go way to like, hey, hey, we don't need all this. You know, <laughs> we, we don't need all this. It's, it's less is more and figuring out how to really kind of scope and let the camera do the work. Um, you know, uh, the camera is your best friend. Um, I'm talking to all the theater kids now. They're like, okay, the camera is your best. It, it, <laughs> is, your best, <laughs> it is your best friend. It's okay. Um, you get away from that feeling like, I feel like I didn't do enough. Because just because in my mind, I always felt like, oh, I didn't do enough, but I wasn't feeling, I didn't emote like I should have. And then you go back and look at it and they're like, no, you did so many things. You can just do, like, I can't do the eyebrow thing. I wish I could. But like, just sort of <laughs> shit. You know, can you? Because I, I can anybody? Yeah, I, I, mean, I would love to hear oh, process yeah, wise. Sounds like, <laughs> sounds like I've been waiting. I yeah, as you guys are waiting to go on set, you know, those last few minutes before it's time to actually call action. What is there anything specifically any exercise you're exercises you're doing to tune out and become your character? I actually have developed a, a technique <laughs> that like way too late in the game. I, I like it, I, we just did the fifth season of Search Party and it was like basically the, the final season. And I was like, how did I just now think of this? I should have been doing this from the beginning, but like, just um, cause I'm always, I'm always so shocked by how fake it feels. Like, like film is so, you, you largely, I mean, in my experience, I leave takes feeling like you, you felt like, a, like, just like, oh God, I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't right. You know, there's like all these crew members and there's a camera right here. And I'm supposed to be like, crying, you know, it's so, it's so artificial and it, it, but your, your experience of it never matters. You know, it's like, it is always, I think it's like really important to remember that you are like a prop, <laughs> you know, I think it's like, you know, you of course have your own agency and, you know, and your own ideas that you bring to it, but it is important to remember that you are just kind of like, you have to like hit your marks and, and embrace the fake, the artificiality of the set experience. But a recent technique that I came up with <laughs> that I'm, I'm going to kind of copy right here today on Fresh Faces is to look at something in the room before the scene that's not a camera or a crew member. Like just look at like the sky if you're outside, look at like a candle and just be like, I'm in a real room. Like this is a real object in a real room. Mm. And that really, really helps me. Like it, 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 it takes away some of just the overwhelming feeling of like, the fakeness of it all. Hmm. That's so, yeah. <laughs> How about Lily and Donald? Do you have any tricks you do to kind of transport yourself into the magical world of collaboration and and the camera? Yeah, I, I get on everybody's nerves honestly because I'm always nervous, like always before I 
film anything. It doesn't matter how many times we've done this. Like the first day before we do the first take, I'm always just like, ah. so I'm always like playing around with my castmates and I know they probably got tired of me, but I just want to, get, especially if we're supposed to be like really good friends, like I, we play rock, paper, scissors and then like destroy all the time. So it's like rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And if you lose, then you have to like die dramatically. Mm-hmm. And that finding like doing little things like that, like catching people off guard, kind of like the aha, it just kind of keeps everything light and airy. And, you know, it kind of gets you out of your own way. It gets me out of my own head because I am like an Olympian of mm-hmm. overthinkers. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, I it's like- nice to keep we're all talking about like being embodied, like how to get, how to stay embodied in a, in an art making form where you're, you really are by nature somewhat objectified by the camera and yeah. the script. Yeah. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that, Lily? Sure. sure. Um, I could really tell you guys had that attitude and that relationship off camera as well as on. So it's like really nice to hear oh. you. Yeah. Bring that up. Hey. It, it translated really wonderfully um for me for some of the intense scenes that I had to go into um I'm a total people pleaser and it what was so one of the best parts of filmmaking is getting to know the your cast and crew and having this kind of like um really familial bond with all of the collaborators you get to come across it's almost like camp because you're working together every single day with the same and and it's and it's and it's one of the most magical parts of this at the same time sometimes all i needed was to be alone so learning to just set boundaries without being afraid of hurting anyone's feelings or seeming antisocial knowing that i needed to put my like noise canceling headphones on and just like sit in a chair and do what i needed to do to emotionally prepare without worrying about what anything else that's going on around me turned out to be one of the most useful tools in just staying grounded and like being in the zone yeah, I'm, that's very scary for me too. I'm a people pleaser as well. And and film sets are so social. There's so many people. You're so overstimulated. You're just all, I mean, I'm just, it's so hard for me not to just fully tap dance. You, you missed my gesture. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's really hard for me. Like if I, if I need to do something that's a little scary or something, it's very hard for me to just like sit in a chair and like fend people off. Um, <laughs> you got to do it. And everyone, everyone on film set also is, I think, knows that that's a requirement, you know, that, that, so, so we, it's hard for me to not feel like a monster, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I think we all, I think we all feel that way. Everybody in the art, in the world of art, we're all kind of like trying to create a space of creative love, you know, with one another and care for one another. And yeah, I always, feel very guilty, but like, I always want to eat lunch by myself. You know, it's like, that's my hour where I'm just like, I don't, I just want to eat sloppily and sometimes take a nap, just zone out. And of course I, I also want to be with everybody. So, um, well, I wanted to talk a little bit more about politics and filmmaking, even though I really appreciate what you had to say, John, which was like, this wasn't intended to be a queer film, but I, I felt very much that what Theta did by, you know, surprising us with the subject matter. It's not about should I or shouldn't I? It's not about like, am I going? I went, I had my FFS. It was great. It was actually about like her best friend leaving behind a house set. <laughs> yeah. He did feel like a trans kind of trickster queering of traditional story. I really like that. And I'm thinking, Donald, about the way in which um, your film really like forced people to ask this question about privilege and like calling the police or not. And, and, you know, we don't make the films for po- films for politics, yet we, I think, are inviting people into these embodied experiences where they can watch these characters go through these emotional experiences. And so are you thinking about, like, um, Black cinema, the Black voice, what it means to create this from the inside and not have some, you know, it, it coming from the outside where it's serving purposes of white people? Um, oof, oof. Uh, I think honestly, you're not, you're, how can, I'm trying to figure out how to articulate this. I'll just say, 
Yeah, just go for it. You're, yeah, especially it's really like, just about your skincare routine anyway, and that's yeah, the anyway, only part yeah, we're going to use. Yeah, eyes, make sure to get it. Yeah, um, we're, that's what's going to go out, and people aren't going to see the rest of this. It's wild because like people of color know all too well that it doesn't matter what you do. I'm always going to be a symbol of you know something. I'm always going to. Okay, case in point. This is also like a aha and a half. Perfect. Uh, realizing that I'm black in literally everything that I do. Everything. It doesn't matter. I could, you know, be flipping a burger. I'm always, I'm not just a burger flipper. I'm a black burger flipper flips the best burger in the world. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> always, it's always going to be that. So I think there, there are certain aspects of this film where we're not trying to answer any questions. We're just trying to start the conversation. Um, and my phone has been going, I'm not that popular. So like my phone lately has just been like, boom, 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 boom. And everyone's asking, so, okay, well, what about this? And what do you, how, how do you feel about this? And I'm like, this is why we made this film right here. This is exactly just to get the conversation started. Well, who's this movie for? It's for anyone who's willing to tap into empathy and see a different perspective. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter what your race is. If you are willing to watch and say, hmm, you know what? I can see that. I don't know if I would necessarily do this. Um, that's, that's who it's for. But also selfishly, I'm still black in everything that I do. Um, I didn't grow up like my character. I didn't grow up like Kunle. I grew up definitely like Sean. So there was always like this little tension of my first instinct is he's like, yo, uh-uh, we can't do this. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know, I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Lines saying we got to help. Um, but definitely, definitely. Um, and it's for, yeah, culturally, it was, this was a very personal thing to me because, who hold it, D. <laughs> there are people who've gone through this situation that did not make it out of the situation. And that's facts. And there are people who will go through this situation and won't make it out of the situation even after this film. So to really, you know, embody that and to be as truthful as possible and as, you know, as in service to this character as I can be, like that right there was just something where those were my headphone days. There are a few, I think it was like three days on set where I kind of told everybody like, hey, and we could see it in the, like, it wasn't at the beginning, it's like towards the middle. So I'm like, hey, just so y'all know next week, I'm just, they're like, okay, cool, got it. And then you just sit and you're in this zone because, you know, I have to be, I have to be truthful with this in order for people to understand and, and really feel it. And yeah, I still kind of get chills when I think about it, but hopefully it changes the conversation and hopefully it changes someone's perspective. And if you can, you know, sit down and have a conversation with someone who doesn't look like you, and maybe you don't agree with what we did, but you can, kind of change and see the why as long as you can see the why then we can start so yeah thank you that was a beautiful answer um so oh. Lily, i guess that makes me think about you know this feminist question i keep bringing it back to consent and as female filmmakers are taking these moments to you know dramatize these moments in their childhood where they're like you know this thing happened or did I make it happen or did it happen to me? So subject, object, subject, object. It's such a big responsibility when I think about the actors in that, when I think about, you know, the, the movies that I've seen that kind of take this older man, younger woman relationship and try to figure out whether or not, you know, the power dynamic is making it impossible to consent. You know, do you make a decision beforehand about, how do you how do you think about that um that that, that is a it's a political moment this movie the conversation around it you know similar to donald's like do you call the police it's the similar thing for women did mm -hmm. i was i you know was this okay with me or was it not you know um was i there when it happened mm -hmm. um are you referring to my relationship with Tom. Yeah. Just like when there's such an age difference. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about Lena Dunham's movie. I'm thinking about Marielle Heller's movie. I'm thinking about fish tank. I mean, all my favorite movies yeah. have 
a filmmaker who's using a version of a, a younger girl interacting with an older man, like we all did to re- figure out whether or not we were actually there. Were we being used by them? Were we using them? H- how do you, do you have to make a decision first or like, how do you enter into this political question, which I think a lot of filmmakers have to answer to, especially when people go, well, if we hate the male gaze, why are we allowing female filmmakers to make films about older men and younger women? Like it it is political, this work. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I knew right from the get-go that I had to separate my opinions on their relationship from my characters. And that it, although I recognize their relationship for all of the disturbing um, manipulation that goes on, um, the whole kind of point is um, coercion is very powerful and coercion is not consent. And it's impossible to consent at that age. And it's impossible to, to consent under those circumstances when you are being actively groomed. Um, so I, as, in, as my character, However, I didn't have that perspective. That only comes with time and and, uh, retrospect. So um, I could never judge Leah for the choices she was making in real time. Um, And hopefully the audience doesn't either. I hope that they can kind of move and empathize with me along this journey and just like Donald said, um, even if they don't necessarily agree with every choice that she makes, I hope at least they can see why. And I hope they that it sparks conversation around the issue. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. That's such a hard question, but I'm so grateful for your willingness to try and help, you know, speak to it because it's, it's really... It's, you know, when the object becomes the subject, but the story is still there, you know, being manipulated by an older man and us all trying to decide like who's complicit and who isn't. It's just so important and so beautiful to have the art that you guys are making right now. So thank you. All right. It's time for another aha moment. John Early, just aha about anything, not even acting, just like aha, life, figured it out. What? (sighs) Okay, well, it is going to be about acting. Okay. Because <laughs> that's all I think about, Joey. Um, uh, you know, I mean, it's kind of, well, you know, I, I, went to, I went to an acting program too, and um, it was very much, um, you know, you, you were understandably kind of trained to be a vessel so that you can be a kind of neutral vessel. <clears throat> like, um, so that, you know, shoulders dropped, voice released, um, uh, so that you can kind of book various roles. You know, it, it, there's a very practical reason why um, that is like essential to acting training. Uh, but it was always very paralyzing for me because I really like the actors I looked up to had like like Jennifer Saunders or like Lisa Kudrow, these people who have such a distinct comedic worldview. They they actually are not just they're not just like actors for hire, which there's nothing wrong with that. They just happen to my heroes all have this kind of um uh, they all share this quality, which is like there's I always felt like those people were like kind of saying something about the world through their characterizations of people. You know, um, it wasn't just about disappearing into the role. I felt like they had like ideas, you know? And, um, and so to me, like my, my true aha moment as an actor after feeling kind of really kind of not just kind of paralyzed um, for years was when I started doing stand up. It just, it really helped me kind of, you know, articulate my worldview to people. And it, um, it made me a, a thousand times more confident on camera or on stage um, after I kind of had done that. With Theta too, Theta and I used to co-host a variety show in New York together for like five years. 
And um, and I really like us getting drunk on stage together and, talk, and talking <laughs> shit was like truly where I feel like I found my um, my my cadences and my like my worldview. Wow, yeah. Or is it kind of like playing as children that I always felt like was present when any scene I shot was like. I mean, I, as, a, as a director, I absolutely love to just like collect my favorite people and then like, you know, pull the trigger and see what happened. Um, and imagine that really nobody can see us except for ourselves and that nobody is going is going to see it. Um, but I, I guess I wanted to, I, I hate to bring it back to the political, but that's, I think me, creating that bubble around yourselves, you know, where you are in kind of a trans queer bubble, where you are in a feminist bubble, where you are in a bubble with other African-American people. I guess, talk a little bit about that. So that, you know, as P, for me, when I'm trying to like help young people, I'm, I'm just sort of like, they're all kind of, everybody's working so hard to climb so many ladders, but it's almost like, the work is really there with your theater friends from high school and college and connecting. Like, how do you make that bubble and how do you believe in it and stay in it? Donald, Lily. Any, either of you guys want well, to? Well, I'll, I'll talk again. Yeah, is that okay? <laughs> Sorry. It's pretty, pretty uh, white this centering of you, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly center myself. Okay, what um, about you, John? <laughs> but I really don't know. I wonder what our box is. Am I the Jan? You know what I mean? Uh, you're the Alice. Okay, I'm the Alice right now? <laughs> yeah, no, there's only six, so, so honor. we are missing. Ann B. Davis, a huge hero of mine, so an honor to be Alice in this equation. Um, I, um, the bubble- You said I mean, you get well, drunk, I mean, is that true? Do you drink <laughs> while you're working? <laughs> um, no, God, no. I've, I've never done that. But, I mean, certainly we like would, Everyone was like staying at my house, you know, so we, we of course, would drink a little at night. But um, it was, I mean, it, in the case of this short, we shot, I'm sure everyone shot their their respective projects in COVID, right? I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, ours was, um, we were kind of like, like, like Theta just wanted to make, wanted to do a camera test for this feature idea um, that we're working on together. And so she threw together the short based on the kind of limitations of me, my boyfriend, Gordon, Theta, my house and COVID, you know, like this. And so, and, and I think, I don't know if this is maybe indirectly answering your question, but I think just like there was something really, I think limitations are so good as an artist. Um, um to like embrace the restrictions embrace your kind of given materials and like run with it and so yeah i don't know and, and i think as because of that the short feels like very intimate and um and she uh, yeah oh no what about um so lily and donald besides these projects are you working on other projects with friends or are you creating your own work or devising work in your careers right now Get it, Lily. <laughs> well, um, I've always, yeah, I've always had a couple like things going at once. Eventually I kind of want to move into writing and directing as well. Um, but it's very kind of loose, a loose goal in mind. Um, I'm really passionate about acting right now and that act and, and committing to that entirely turns out to be a full-time job. So mm. currently, Mostly just focusing on that, um, excited for whatever comes next. But uh, I think it's a really wonderful process to surround yourself with um, creative people and supportive people, even if it's not necessarily in the same like art form. Um, to be around people with like-minded goals and are just who are accepting and vulnerable and um, willing to share and put themselves out there. It just makes you so much more willing to do the same. So I, yeah, I'm grateful for the kind of friends that I have by my side. Hmm. Yeah, um, we're always trying to devise something. We're always trying to figure out a way to get back on. I'm so selfish because if I like you, I'm like, we got to work together again, please. And I always like everyone. So <laughs> I, I'm, I always just want to work with my friends again. Like I'm looking at John and Lily and I'm like, all right, come on, we got to make this happen. <laughs> um, 
but uh yeah all it's it's always that way i think you kind of find your tribe um and i've been really really fortunate to you know just find like-minded people who are also you know creatives that are that are willing to step outside of their comfort zone um I'll, but i always feel like i never get enough time with anyone this was my my first project where i'm like Yes, I feel like we actually were able to accomplish something where I felt like I in in that way. Um, see, they're calling you now. They're like, make it happen. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I always need more time. And I always feel like, you know, I'm thinking like, like my friends, what, Charmaine Bingwa, Carlisa Grant, I need more time. Frankie and Sam, I need more time. I always need, and the whole like emergency crew. Um, and it's funny, I don't know if y'all have gotten this yet, but uh, as soon as it like it premiered, everybody's like, when's the second one coming out? I'm like, the second one? <laughs> like, yeah, when's, are y'all doing a number two? Like, if they do it, I'm doing it. Like, absolutely. So <laughs> yeah, I just want to work with good people who are, you know, character driven and, you know, that want to work with me, so. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, um, and that was like a great moment when you shout out some of your collaborators, John and Lily. I'd be curious, who are the artists that you're watching right now and looking at where you're like, holy shit, I hope I get to collaborate with this person one day or, or see their work in person. Who are your freshest of faces? It doesn't matter <laughs> if they have dewy skin, moist skin, if they gloat from within or not, but who excites you artistically right now? I was really excited by Emma Seligman's show of baby. That was so cool to see a young female director um, have such like an astounding um, breakthrough or debut feature. Um, same with Eliza Hitman and uh, her film last year and all of the performances, um, Cindy Flanagan and Talia Ryder, that cast was so inspiring, especially going into um, Palm Trees because uh, although tackling very separate subject matters, they were both very like emotional, intense roles. So to see um, her debut performance in a feature was really inspiring. Awesome. Who's exciting you, John Early? Yeah, the pressure's on. Um, what's, you, what's getting you out of the house if you're going to go see a live show? Mm, ooh, well, I mean, I can only think of my friends. I mean, <laughs> Kate Berland, Jacqueline Novak, you know, two genius comedians, very, very exciting to, very excited to see what they do. Andy DeYoung, who directs a lot of me and Kate's stuff. I'm very, very, he is a brilliant screenplay that I'm very, very excited. To, I'm very excited to see his work separate from me and Kate. Oh God, what I'm like, I've, I just, I keep watching the same old stuff. I need to watch new stuff. What are you watching? Well, I can't, I'm always going back to AbFab. I did like Sopranos and Mad Men during the pandemic, which just absolutely rocked me, having never, never done that before. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, 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 a, I'm being a bad um, kind of contemporary. So bad. Artist. <laughs> You're so bad, John Early. <laughs> Donald, what about you? Like, what are you watching? What are you, what are you finding exciting out there? And well, right now I'm on this like euphoria kick. Um, that show was wild. Like that show was wild. Um, but definitely on this euphoria kick. Um, Ozark. It's just busted out, busted out. Um, what about some, show... fre some fresh people, some fresh faces, some people who nobody knows about that you know about? Oh, well, who I have nobody... to... Get it, Lily, because who Sorry. nobody knows about? <laughs> I have to quickly shout out my friend Annie Hamilton, who's having her uh, solo show uh, in person at the Jane tonight. It's sold out. Otherwise, I would highly recommend you guys get a ticket. But as soon as you get the chance to see anything by Annie Hamilton, you should. Um, she's she's a certainly a fresh face, but I, that I'm sure you'll see more of soon. Right. Um, and I want to quickly try to manifest working with Nicholas Braun. Like I am a huge. <laughs> I just need to put that out there. <laughs> we, have, we are placing it in the manifest machine. Sponsored by Neutrogena. Uh, actually, by the manifest <laughs> machine is, is sponsored by Chapstick. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. That's a mistake. Thank you. Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Guys, as we wrap this up, um, any more aha moments to just share with people of your sparks in your career, or your life? I'm just going to, I got to shout out my cast. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't shout get them out, out of here without shouting out my cast. I always say best cast, best crew. And I'm, I genuinely mean that. Like we all got so close and none of us are able to give the performances that we gave without you know, feeling this very like familial bond. So RJ, Sebastian, Madison, Maddie, Sabrina, Diego, our core seven, and then to my guys, you know, Carrie and John and Marty and Isaac and everyone in the whole, just the whole team. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Are they watching? I, you know what, they probably won't. But maybe one of them will. And he's like, hey, he said it at the end. And they're like, skipping all the way through. And they're like, all right, that's my name. That's my name. So. Well, if they are watching, hi, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, the question is also always on my mind. Is there anybody on this panel who's thinking as much about Julia Fox and Kanye and Kim and Pete Davidson as I am? <laughs> you are. Can we just talk for a second? Let's do it. After this. I'm excited. I mean, I, I'm sure Julia Fox is fine on a kind of PR level, but I loved her so much in Uncut Gems. So I'm, I'm hoping all the media attention is bringing people back to her performance in Uncut Gems. Okay. She's so great. Yeah, it's an endless feed. I'm never full. It's like I'm never full. <laughs> I'm never full. Did you see the, I mean, the video of, of Madonna and all them together? What a night. And that's why I stay in. I'm afraid I'm going to get stuck at a place like that. Yeah. I love, I love Madonna, but I did notice there was like, as the camera was panning, it pans by her and then she leans in as it keeps going. And I noticed Kanye look at Madonna and then reach for Julia's thigh to comfort himself because I think he felt weird watching Madonna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like watches Madonna go like this and then he grabs Julia Fox's thigh for, for ballast. Yeah. Let's must. watch it again. Can we pull up the clip? <laughs> Let's pull up the clip. <clears throat> I think we're running out of time, but I want to like give Lily and John a chance to just kind of like give your thanks of the people who uh, were part of the film with you. Yeah, I, I would love to thank um, my director and writer, Jamie Dack, for giving me this opportunity and just trusting me with such a personal and such an ambitious role. Um, I'm so grateful to have gotten to do this with you and um, can't really imagine having my first be with anybody else. Same with Jonathan Tucker, an incredible partner and friend, um, Gretchen Mall, Quinn Frankel, who also made her debut performance in this as my best friend, Amber, um, Lily Colias, <laughs> Timothy, uh, read all of the boys on set. Everyone just blew it out of the park. Um, thank you guys. And thank you Sundance for- Yeah, thank you Sundance. Yes. Uh, I'll, I gotta thank Theta Hamill, uh, who's been my dear friend for so long. It's been infuriating being her friend and like for people not to understand her level of genius. Um, her, so it's been really, really thrilling to finally see her kind of um, sl slowly open the door to her kind of intellectual and creative magnitude. Um, so Theta Hamill, yes. Um, Gordon Landenberger, brilliant, brilliant. Um, Bruno in the short, genius actor and artist. Ali Jane Compton, who's our like, our beautiful producer. Arlene Muller, who's the genius DP who also did 555 with me, Kate and Andy, check it out, it's on Vimeo. And, um, <laughs> and then, and Arlene's whole crew and just, yeah, it was it was a real dreamy experience. And and we gotta thank you, Joey, for being the the Julia Fox's thigh <laughs> of, the, of this discussion. That means so much. So you, you, yeah. turn, you turn to me and you place a, a gentle hand on my skin to make yourself feel centered in a moment of pure and utter chaos. Exactly. And it's very clear that I'm in the of this situation. <laughs> yeah. Moments when you're asking why. <clears throat> you can place your hand on me and know that <laughs> we're all going to be okay. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. For those who are curious about Julia Fox and Kanye, they are in Paris today. They did have a great day yesterday. We'll see what they have for lunch today. 
And uh, I'll let you know more about that on my next panel. <laughs> <laughs> Anything anybody else wants to say while they have this opportunity to? Um... <clears throat> uh, thank you fresh, to my- Fresh, so fresh. Thank you to my team. Thank you, Amazon, Temple Hill. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna do a, a, one of these. There's a, there's a certain universe that I feel like, I feel like when we were all younger, <clears throat> you know, we wanna be super. Uh, and I feel like there's a universe that I need to be in significantly. Mm, you're saying yeah. the superhero universe. Yeah. Like yeah, that. Joey. Yeah. What could you see me as, Joey? What do you think? I, I like this idea of this, like, manifesting. I mean, obviously. <laughs> you you are all destined. But, yeah. So, okay, Donald, we see you as a superhero yeah. on the big, all big together. screen. What, what about you? Of us. Don and Lily, whose careers do you want? Where do you want to be in five years? I don't know if you have that much time, John. I feel like you've been around for a while. No, I know. <laughs> the window is fully closed. Like, but Lily, you've got time. Yeah, Lily, you got that. <laughs> That's where I want to be right now. This exceeds my wildest dreams. Um, I'm so grateful. And just to be on this panel with you guys, I'm such huge fans of your work, um, fan of your works. But <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't think of anything better than just this moment right now. So awesome. All right. Should we hand it back to Sundance or send everybody to their next film? Thanks for coming, guys. Thank Thank you, you, Joey. Let's hang out in person.